if a huge pop star tells in an interview they wrote the track because they felt bad or were in a certain mood, that's bullshit. They usually don't write the lyrics. I'm saying it's you gotta, you gotta. Do you know these days where you sit at home late at night and you get all of a sudden really creative, really awake, you start working and then it's like six in the morning and you have this conflict, should I even go to sleep or just go to work? Today's one of these days, so, so please bear with me a little. Morning, I got something for you to try out. Oh, uh, now that's a present. Not a <laughs> present, no, no, no. <laughs> Heavy, but... Oh. Whoa. <laughs> yes, that's the noise cancelling. That's amazing. By the way, if you're interested in knowing what I think about the new Apple headphones, just check out yesterday's video. Today it's all about music making and business stuff. First up, checking at least 180 top lines. That's the best way. And right now during COVID, the only way to get good vocals and lyrics for your production and listening through all of them is like a key step in my music making process. But the only downside of it is it's very, very time consuming. Listening to 180 songs just takes a while. So I usually try to combine it with something else. Today, probably the most efficient and the healthiest. So far, no good songs. Everything is just trash. Unfortunately, still not good songs. It's cold, it's windy. Just five more minutes. One song that, that might actually work. Back at the studio, 10K later, one hour later, I found three tracks that I consider and need to double check in the studio. These are definitely not meant for running. Don't use them for running. It's disgusting. Three songs out of a ton of songs. Most of them are just bad. The other part is just not my style. And then I'm left with three. The next step, the next step is the most important that could break or make a record. delicious i have this theory if you exercise and eat healthy you can like sleep a little less but don't quote me on that so i listened to to the songs a couple of times out of those three i think just one actually fits 100 percent to what what i i want to do in the future and is quality wise good enough the next part is then the complicated part Leonard will then negotiate for me with the company that sent us the top line. And there are actually three main things you need to check. Really important. Number one, the copyrights. Who gets what kind of percentage of the rights of who made the song? Like the intellectual property, not the recording itself. Like the melody, coming up with the melodies. And this can range from a singer getting 90% to 50% and the producer getting from 10% to 50%. It really depends how complex is the instrumental, how much melody and main melody elements does the instrumental add, how good is the singing, how is, is the vocal like just for a club track in the break or is it like a full vocal song from start to finish? And then of course, like the, the standing, the position of those two artists, who is more famous, who has more followers, who who just has the, the, the better negotiating. Fully up to whatever you want, you can agree on anything. Especially in the US and Germany, it would be not allowed. In the US, you could even pay someone and get 100% of their copyright. The second really important is the split of the master rights the money you make through Spotify, CD sales, like all that kind of stuff where someone is listening to it and directly paying for it. That also needs to be split. 
usually the label takes a huge cut and then what is left is split between the producer and the singer. Here again, anything is possible. It could be the producer gets 90%, the singer 10, 50, 50, whatever. Like it's totally up to you. Sometimes even the people that are the writers want a very small percentage because copyright from Spotify isn't that much anymore. That has changed in recent years. So they also request sometimes 3%, 5%, 10% of the master to just have some sort or form of income. Um, I said three important things. What was the third? Oh yeah, the fee. The fee. You pay a fee, a recording fee. It's actually meant for the singer as a compensation for making sure to record the vocal. Nowadays, usually most singers record it themselves, but sometimes they have to go to a studio, an engineer needs to record it. Maybe they also already do some of the editing, pitch correcting, like actually most people do the pitch correcting themselves because they don't want their voice on a record without the correction. Some also can't really sing and that's why they're correcting it. Um, this is also totally up to you and the singer. It could be I don't know, 300 to 500, which would be like the lower end to 800, 1000, 1200, like the mid tier. And then it, it can just go up to infinity. Again, it depends on how famous the singer actually is, how famous you are as a producer, totally up to you and them to actually decide. And those three, actually there's a fourth one, if the singer wants to have a feature on the record, yes or no. All of this, you don't need a contract, it's enough if it's in an email, but that's now the next step. And now you're probably wondering how actually in the first place, how do you get these top lines? I'll tell you, but first a little bit of music making. It's, it's, it's already quite late. Logic just crashed. Wow. Otherwise a really great successful session, still working on that new darker song with those new vocals. And for example, these, these vocals that you just heard, I got them through just browsing on Spotify, listening to music, and there was a vocal I liked. So I just hit up that person, got back to me, month later, finalizing the song. That's how simple it can be. And that's usually how it's done for, for club music. You just send someone your instrumental, they sing on top of it, send it back, you like it, perfect. For the more popular kind of music, you need to write a whole lot of emails. Leonard is taking care of that. How many emails or how many hours you spend on trying to find top lines? Mm, I would say at least half of the time I'm here, so. <laughs> It's the, the Four to five part. hours a day. And how many of these top lines are good? Two, three, four percent. And then how many of those, the business stuff, goes through without a problem? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's it's usually the hardest part. But still, you you have to you have to do it. It's it's part of, of how to get vocals. And I know you could argue now, why on earth don't you write your own lyrics? So first of all, the obvious. COVID. I can't have a million people here in the studio. Traveling is not possible. I usually work together with people that are native speakers, native English speakers. So UK, US, Australia, Australia, actually not. It's way too far away, but I, ca I can't have them here. Reason number one. Then I, I had in the past a lot of sessions here in the studio. And the thing is, usually it takes a day with a singer, songwriter, and maybe a guitar player together to write a song. I did it with Frankie, with Marvin, with Julia, with Gavin. Straight ahead, moving faster. But the problem is we make songs and out of those four or five, which are four or five days, just maybe one is good enough. The rest is just trash. It's like rough sketching every day, just coming up with lyrics, coming up with melodies and recording it really rough and then doing the next one. So it's it's just a numbers game. I would have to spend almost every second day of the year to to get enough songs ready and then just pick the best ones to actually have a release. It just doesn't make any sense. I love sessions. I can write lyrics. I'm not a native speaker, but I can write 
or assist someone writing. I can, I can like hum and play melodies to someone else. That's actually not the problem. It's just you end up with songs, even if you end up with a good song, it might happen that it's not your style. And then you have to send it to someone else. And that's how all of this with the top lines are starting. People making sessions, making songs, and then sending it around. I would then, in, in, instead of being like a producer that finishes songs and releases them, I would become one of these producers that sits in sessions and is part of the songwriting process. So those are, those are two separate things, at least on a certain kind of level. And it's just way more efficient. That's how the industry works. If a huge pop star tells in an interview they wrote the track because they felt bad or were in a certain mood, that's bullshit. They usually don't write the lyrics. So last, let me maybe give you some examples because some of you might not even know how these top lines, what, what they sound like. Man, the heat starts to rise. Want you like a habit, failing when I fight it. Boy, I got you on my brain. Like, usually it's just like chords, maybe guitar, the voice, the general idea, the general style. Let's check maybe another one. This one right here is 120 BPM. Yeah, I got friends who hit the gym once a day. While I'm at home writing songs, playing video games, we all live out our lives a different way. Because we're beautiful. And these top lines, they're, they're like a currency in the music industry. Whoever has the best top lines has the best songs, the most biggest hit potential. And there are people making a ton of cash with top lines. People managing the singer songwriters, writing that kind of stuff. It's a huge industry. And I can only recommend you to get in touch with people that write top lines. You can just hit up singer songwriters that you like. You can get in touch with agencies that actually sit in between the producer and the singer songwriter. And they do all of the negotiation and stuff like that. And they will send you hundreds and hundreds of top lines. Usually it's easy to get them. Just Google for top lines companies that offer top lines, write them a nice email, they will send you back top lines. Maybe some of them won't send them back to you because you're not at a certain level. As a beginner, it's a little harder to, to, to get top lines, but still possible. That's how I started. Like I think my first track about you, I found a singer songwriter in Berlin while partying. Good track, made me like three and a half million plays on Spotify. And then the next two, I used the first one, the success, to get the next singers involved and just working my way up. And right now I'm getting, I'm getting top lines by Ultra, Universal, Warner, and these kind of companies. Um, but still, try, try sending them an email. Just really nice. Hey, I need some top lines. I'm interested. Don't forget, you will usually have to pay for these and make sure all of the rights are cleared. And then at the very end, for me today, there's just one last little thing I need to kind of get confirmation by, because I never ever in the past 10 years have ever bought a top line without asking one person. With your headphones. It's cozy. Yeah. Keeps my ears warm. It's really cold in Germany. Looks a bit stupid driving yeah, and yeah. headphones but it's, on. It's, it's comfortable. I like it. I need your help. I got some new vocals. Okay. Once we're home, we're gonna listen to your vocals. Okay. Do we need to go shopping? Yes, of course. Or well, we can have Maultaschen. Hmm. <sighs> It's again way past midnight, but Vanessa approved. She's just not analyzing music. She's like a pure music listener, doesn't have a clue about music production. And she listens to a song and then says, I like it, I don't like it, it sounds weird. What is that bullshit? No, that's not good. I prefer this one right here. It's very straight, very honest, and she has like a good natural sense for it. I'm over analyzing everything. I'm like, I'm, I'm far from what a normal music listener actually listens for. Because at the end, you're making music not for other music producers, you're making music for normal people out there. So make sure it actually works with them, that they understand it, that it doesn't sound confusing. 
and that they just enjoy listening to it. That's like, that's the key. That's the most, most important of all.